Today on Peasants Gone Wild, more about sickles. If you haven't seen part one about sickle fighting, it's linked below. A lot of people seem to like that because it showed how such a seemingly innocent farming tool can be brutally effective in a fight. A fight against other sickles, at least, or daggers or knives. And apparently it also served as inspiration or justification for character concepts like a dual sickle wielding druid, or perhaps a rogue, or maybe even a shamanistic barbarian whose spirit animal is the praying mantis. You never know. As improvised weapons, sickles definitely have a lot of neat tricks going for them. Uh, you can bind and control an opponent's weapon, you can hook limbs, you can slice, you can strike and pierce with the tip, and you could literally sweep someone off their feet by hooking the back of the calf or the ankle, and of course in grappling this is straight up vicious. So it's got a lot going on. How would it fare against a swordsman? Well, it's kind of an all or nothing situation. Either you manage to get within your reach past the opponent's longer blade, and you destroy them basically in grappling by controlling, hooking, slicing, etc. <laughs> or uh, you just get shut down before you can even get close. And that's a typical problem with any short weapon. Whenever you have a reach disadvantage, you're in a precarious situation because you need to rush in and get to within your own reach. But of course the opponent is not rooted in place. So anytime you come forward, the opponent can just move as well. And this is what often happens. You know, essentially you need to bind the opponent's blade, the, the sword, with a sickle in order to really be able to move in safely. You need to control the blade and then move in while you maintain control. Because otherwise they're just going to counter and destroy you. So how do you do that? Well, this is where it becomes pretty tricky because, well, there is no guard right here. So I've had situations where I caught it successfully, but unfortunately the blade landed on my hand. If there was a guard, that wouldn't be a problem. But of course, a sickle could be modified if it was intended to be used as an actual weapon for combat. Speaking of which, personally I would go with something like this. Good amount of hand protection. But enough talk! How about you? Well, uh, technically the blade can slice if I don't allow it to move, which I didn't. But either way, this is not good. Even though rushing in to close the gap seems like the way to go with short weapons, I found that it's actually safer to wait for the opponent to strike, then parry and control the sword to move in safely. Which, by the way, is also what the historical sources generally tell you. 
Although that didn't always work out either, and of course, your mileage may vary. You know what would be great? A knuckle guard. With such a short weapon, it's so easy to mistime the parry by just a fraction of a second. This is not a good situation. <laughs> <No>. <laughs>
here is one serious problem. In order to successfully defend against the opponent's sword cut, you need to really displace it pretty aggressively. It's not enough to just hold it here and hope that you'll be able to stop it. You can't. <laughs> there were a number of situations where I defended, but the sword cut blew straight through because, well, the sword has more mass and more leverage, and uh, it just hits hard. Now, this situation is still better than not defending, even if it blows through. I've already taken some of the force out of it, of course, so it's not going to hit as hard as if I just stood there and took it. But that's still not good. So in order to be safe, I have to cut into the opponent's attack and really make sure that I displace it off to the side where it can't threaten me. Here's the problem with that. Against an agile blade, you don't want to use any movements that are larger than what's absolutely necessary. Because if the opponent faints, you know, pretends to attack here and I come to meet it and then he moves over and it attacks my opposite opening, now I'm, I'm in trouble. Now I have to move the sickle all the way over here. And if the opponent keeps pressing the offense and keeps just, you know, alternating one side to the other, you can't just be defending all the time. You need to actually move in and be able to attack. So that's a bit of a problem. What's a good way to compensate if your main weapon is not great at keeping you safe? Using a shield, of course. Now, the problem is I wasn't able to haul a big shield over to the location where we were sparring that day. So all I had was a buckler, which is not all that much coverage. And uh, you have to be spot on with the block. Otherwise, the opponent's strike may simply go right through. <laughs> you know, turn the shield and hit you anyway, which is what happened a number of times. One thing I've learned from this is that any short weapon has a particular Achilles heel. So here's the problem. As the fighter with a short weapon, I need to move in. And when I move forward and put weight on my forward leg, I can't get it out of the way. And that's normally the preferred way to evade leg hits. You know, ideally the best defense against a leg cut is move the leg out of the way because then you're able to counter. The second best is to cut into the opponent's leg cut. So you displace their strike with one of your own. The problem is you can't reach. You can't really reach your own calf with such a short weapon. I mean, you can, but then you have to really lower yourself, which takes quite a bit longer. So the problem that I ran into is there were a number of, of cuts, feints basically, cuts that look like they came either to my upper right opening or to my center right opening. So like a horizontal cut. And then it turned out actually to be a leg cut. So if I try to defend here, particularly if my weight is on my front leg because I just tried to go forward and I now have to stop and defend, I can't really move the leg out of the way. And it's really difficult to suddenly do this and then lower myself enough to catch this. Also because everything happens very quickly. Now, if you have a better reaction time, if you have more practice with a short weapon, you're going to be better able to do that. But even then, of course, the problem still is there are plenty of ways to mess it up. For example, if you're trying to cut into it and you're, you end up hitting the opponent's blade with your hand instead, that's not fantastic. So I thought sickle versus sword is definitely hard mode, but could be worse. Then we swap weapons, which really put things into perspective for me. I didn't feel threatened by the sickle at all when I had the sword. So many openings to exploit from a safe distance. Although I got careless at one point and Sindri did a great job of moving in, textbook basically. He caught my arm with the sword and rushed in for grappling and hit me in the ribs with the sickle. So that was a perfect example of the best case scenario for the sickle. It was also the only hit he landed on me while I had the sword. So yeah, 
definitely hard mode. Now overall, I would definitely say that a sickle is a better weapon than most knives and daggers, with the exception of a parrying dagger. I'd much rather have this than that because this eliminates some of the problems. Because now you actually have pretty decent hand protection here and uh, you can work with this a little bit better defensively. You can catch an opponent's blade here. You can thrust with it too, which of course you can't with a sickle. Now you can't hook the way you can with this, obviously. So this is still better in grappling than that. But overall, defensively, you're definitely going to be less endangered if you're using something like a parrying dagger. This is still going to be very difficult. I've tried this before, rapier and dagger versus longsword and sparring, and I have tried to block a longsword cut with this, which is a rather jarring and unpleasant experience. I'll tell you that even if you manage to stop it, which is not easy, it's definitely beating up your hand because a two-handed longsword cut has a lot of power, obviously, and this is not all that much mass to stand against that. So basically, fighting with a sickle or two against swords may work if the user is faster and more agile than the opponent, like a shifty rogue would be. But of course, being faster and more agile is a serious advantage in a duel of sword against sword anyway, whereas it only helps even out the reach disadvantage in a duel of sickle against sword. So this farming tool turned improvised weapon is better than you might think, but it's fighting an uphill battle outside of its size class, if you will. In other words, no problem for an assassin type character who wants to ambush, deceive and sneak attack anyway. Hope you found this interesting and entertaining. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I'm not doing this, nope. Ah, get over here. Your greatest enemy is not your enemy. Nor is it yourself, it is the lacings of thine boots. <laughs> 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 <laughs>